All right. Hello, Fortinos, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is May 1st, 2023. And brothers and sisters, we're going to keep digging. We're going to keep sharing nuggets, more connections, and we're just going to keep doing this till the Lord comes. We're going to keep sharing it. We're going to spread it to everybody we can. <clears throat> we're going to keep supporting and strengthening Uganda with our brother Steve and the ministry exploding over there with them. Man, it's a tense time, isn't it? It's tense. It's exciting. It, it's, it's hard to imagine and believe, like, really deep down that this is, this is it. We're really in the season and time that all of eternity is about to begin. It's craziness. The tribulation is about to start. The truth is revealed in who the Gospels are speaking to. The truth is what it reveals about the years. Uh, it's crazy. It's so crazy. And today, as we go through this, I'm going to show you a couple new pieces. New, but old. New in the sense that now they make sense. Now we could tie a couple pieces in. One is from Genesis 7. The other is connected to Daniel chapter 9. And it's very interesting because a number of people uh, over the years have asked me about Daniel 9. And the thing is, with, with the portion of the Lord's ministry in the first half of Trumpets, it, there, there's, it's not crystal clear the exact portion of time that he's here. And so I always say it's about three and a half years because there's, there's a completion to it, right? There's a completeness to seven years. And that's another thing why, you know, so many people when, you know, Jesus had his ministry and they'll say three and a half years and they, they leave it at that. Like three and a half years sounds like it's complete or something, right? Well, we know there's more to it, but we also know something else because we've come to understand lately this revelation right here, this revelation on the Shemitah Sabbath year chart is absolutely mind-blowing. It reveals so, so much for us. Now that we know when Jesus was born, the, the year and day that he was born, when his death and resurrection was, the, the time frame that it equaled, and that we know when it's all done, he will have had his official ministry seven years, but he will have also completed a total of nine years. We're going to talk about that, and you're going to see what I'm talking about, about how that connects to Daniel chapter 9, because it's something many people have asked me, and there was never a, a direct way to say it, except to show other places in Scripture where we see a 14-year count and, and in the 11th year and so forth. In fact, isn't that amazing? That always just That just brought back to my memories another one right here. This would be a good one to add in. Right? First Kings 6, 30, uh, 37 and 38. In the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the Lord laid in the month of Ziph. And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished. Okay? So in total, the, the temple, the foundation is going to be laid in the midst of seals. The rest of it won't be built until the Lord comes and the rebuilding takes place. And we know that the total is 14 years of which we use this as well. We found this after all this revelation that, that tells us that when the Lord's here and the temple is complete, it's about a total of 11 and a half years, or 10 and a half years, because it's in the midst of the 11th year. And in the 11th year is 10 years and approximately a half. So the question is, how far in? Well, it's the eighth month, but it didn't start on the eighth month, right? And maybe we'll be able to find some connections in this by looking at this with when the foundation started compared to the temple and, and discern a little bit of timing. Because you see, we got the eighth month there. And that might help based on where everything is going to start this year. Kind of interesting. You'll see what I'm getting at when I get there. Um, because I think it'll, it'll really help a lot of people. Because, because to me, it had always been understood. Well believed like the church that it was three and a half years when he was here and when we had the revelation about the 14 years with who the gospels are speaking to in, in the whole storyline 
And we know the Lord there on Mount Zion and the rebuilding taking place as we see starting in Zechariah 8. When we read those things and we see it and we understand it, and that in chapter 11, just like it said in 1 Kings 6, in the 11th year, and you go to the 11th chapter, and the temple was complete, and uh, Satan's cast down, and he, the Lord's got to break his covenant. When, when we see that, we know it also equals about three and a half years. So the, the easiest, because of clarity reasons, was that it was about three and a half years when he was here the first time, and it'll be three and a half years in the first half of Trumpets. But... Like I said, because of the clarity we now have with that Shemitah year chart, I believe I can show the exact count. Now, when I say the exact count, I mean the amount of his ministry in the first half of trumpets. Now, when that, when that cutoff takes place, there's still things, you know, there's still a getting the people going and fleeing and going onto the wings of an eagle. You know, there, there's a period of time that takes place. So, the main point, though, was to understand what does it mean three score and two weeks? Well, we're going to cover that. But before we get there, we're going to cover something else in Genesis connected to Luke to be able to prove out some more from Feast of Weeks, then 50, and then 14 years begins. <clears throat> You'll see what I'm talking about there as well. So with that, as we always like to get started here in this ministry, as you guys know as well, I don't need to spend as much time, right? Because the last video I did, One <coughs> oh, excuse me, this last video I had done, as you guys uh, have seen, it's the last video that was, that was posted. <coughs> it's a short 22 minute video and it goes into greater detail than what I generally talk about here at the beginning of videos. So it's an introduction to give you understanding as to what's going to be revealed in this intro 30 minute bible study in this intro 30 minute bible study and then this big one here it's all because of matthew so this is the one we should be sharing with everybody guys i just sent uh, an email today to a number of um uh, of pastors like some of the ones that we know i like uh, white dove ministries and i like um uh, uh, nelson walters and i sent it to is it DTBM Ministries or something like that? I think it's uh, John Barrett or Barnett or something like that. And, uh, and to some others as well. And I sent them a, a, a straightforward email, just a little bit of insight, and then about watching this little intro video, and we'll see what happens. And so what I'm hoping you guys can help me with is share this video with a little note to the pastor or whoever you're sharing it with send it go we should just like every end time or every ministry youtube channel out there and pastor and church that we know that we have emails that we can just go to their websites and email we should email this to them we should just blitz them all it doesn't matter if somebody else already did we should just blitz them all let everybody have the chance at least to say we shared it right because this 22 minutes changes lives it changed mine. It changed my family's. I have emails and messages and comments from, from many of you all over the world whose lives have been changed by it as well. And not specifically this video, but by the revelation that is in these three in the intro series that we call the intro series. It, it, it changes everything. You suddenly start to see because for anybody that's new, definitely watch this one first, but you're going to come to understand why there are these differences hidden within the Gospels. And I shouldn't say hidden, the mystery of them was hidden. Because these differences, like in Luke, Jesus going to the cross was arrayed in a gorgeous robe, which means white, radiant, beautiful. In Mark, it was purple. In Matthew, it was scarlet. Well, these guys weren't colorblind. So what was the purpose? Or another one in the in the discourses in luke's discourse it says then shall they see jesus coming in a cloud and the word in means in but it's a singular cloud in mark's discourse it says then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds plural and it means in the clouds and it's plural though when you get to matthew it says in the clouds but the word in doesn't actually mean in the definition of the word means on 
So you have in a cloud, in the clouds, and on the clouds. It reveals pre, mid, post, which you'll find out in this video down here. That pre, mid, and post are all true. And so these are the types of things that you're going to begin to understand what these differences are within the Gospels that have confused people, that, that have caused people to leave, that have, that have caused people to say it was man-made. Man nope. It is the hidden mysteries within them, and it is going to blow your mind. It will be worth every moment of your time, I promise you. And this second video right here is what follows suit after you begin to understand the first one. Because when you understand the Gospels are written, the synoptic Gospels of Luke, Mark, and Matthew are written to the pre-trib bride of Christ. Mark is written to the world, the, the house of Israel, and the Gentiles grafted in, and the church that's not ready. Okay? They're not, they're not in Christ. They're not diligent. They're not seeking. They just claim them. They're going to have to go through seals. Most will wake up. Some will fall away, and new ones will come in. And then you realize that it's seven years left also for Matthew. So how did it all get mixed up that we only believed in seven years when the truth of the revelation was 14? Well, that answer comes in the third video. It's a big video and it's awesome because you're going to understand why it was missed, how it got missed. And it all goes back to this one where it all began here in this ministry, which is who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to realize it's all because of Matthew is because all of our foundations from seminary schools, pastors, teachers, everybody for hundreds of years has been taught in the foundation of the Gospel of Matthew. So all the rest of our perspective was from a Matthew perspective. And so anybody believing in pre-trib said it was before it starts and then it's the seven years to Judah because it's the Gospel of Matthew. The problem is because they never understood who Mark was speaking to, Mark's is the seven years of seals. So to say it's pre-trib and then the seven of Matthew 24, there was a seven of Mark first. And those seven are the seven first years of seals. It's absolutely fantastic to understand. It's quite mind-blowing. And so as you begin to understand these, this will warm you up into the understanding these will really start to lay it out for you. Then you can go to ministryrevealed.com. You can read the book on the website. You can download it in PDF or listen to it in audio, all for free on the website. Or if you wanted the book, you can always go to amazon.com if you need that, uh, that paper. Um, you'll see that pre, mid, and post are all true. You'll see the discourses revealed like you have never understood them before. You'll understand the seals and the trumpets in the book of Revelation as you have never understood it before. And more and more, the seven churches, the end time seven churches, revealed. It's absolutely fantastic. So that's why I always recommend everybody, especially if you're new, you definitely want to start with that intro video, uh, which you can see right here as well and start from there. Uh, another place people can go is our website, ministryrevealed.com. There's the book. This is the homepage. So you can watch the intro right here from the homepage. Or you can click the link that will take you to the intro series page of the website. And here it is right here. This intro series will guide you into the end time revelation hidden within the Gospels. It's incredible. Okay, there's the intro video. You can just watch it right here from the website. Or you can literally one-click download to your device. You don't need any special software, nothing. One-click download and it'll be downloaded to your device. And then you've got the intro, uh, the revelation of the Gospels, the 14 years, and then it's all because of Matthew. That's what this page is dedicated to. All right. So it's a, this is a great page to send them to, um, but you could also send them to YouTube as well. All right. So let's get going into this. I wanted to share something that was shared in the forum today. When you hear me talk about the forum, um, you'll, you can go to the website right here, ministryrevealed.com. Click on the forum link. It's free for anybody to sign up. We got people from all over the world in there sharing news, events, Bible studies, all sorts of things, prayer requests, all sorts of stuff. You can join us in there and share info, insight, uh, you know, all sorts of different things. You can support the ministry here and help us also with our cause in Uganda. 
which is just <laughs> it's incredible what our brother Steve is doing over there, man. I, I I I'm blown away every day. I mean, you want to talk about a dedicated brother for the Lord and and doing the work for the Lord. It is incredible what he's doing. And I'm grateful to that we can be a part in uh in helping him keep that going. So you can also support us uh, with these links here too, or info to mail is in the description box under the video. So let me share something with you that was shared in the forum today. I thought it was pretty interesting timing wise, right? Here we are May 1st and, and what's this timing we're looking at? Well, we're either looking at the Feast of Weeks on the 8th of Sivan or the 15th of Sivan. And as we've said before, the reason for the count is because it would appear the count should be from the 16th of Nisan, from Resurrection Day, which means this is the first day of the week, right? So it was one, two, three. So it's the 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th of every month based on the moon is where your uh, true Sabbaths are. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Sabbaths. But it's still something that's quite debated whether the count of the first day of the week starts here and this is the first Sabbath, or whether this is the Sabbath after that's mentioned in, Levit in Leviticus, and this begins the first day of the week, which makes this the first Sabbath. And one of the reasons also for that, which would bring us then to the 15th of Savan, is because we now have seen, we have proven, we, we understood it in the past, but we kind of got away from it <clears throat> because the time wasn't yet. So you kind of try to figure out where this is as we're watching and praying and we're diligently seeking. We can now say with a certainty, we know that Jesus was in fact born on the 15th day of the third month back in his day. We know his death and resurrection was on the first month, right? 14th to the 16th from his death and resurrection from his crucifixion, taken into the hands of sinful men, crucifixion and resurrection. So the question in all of this had been is, is this the actual Feast of Weeks? Meaning it's the Feast of Weeks because this is where Jesus was born. And it would make sense that Jesus would have been born at a, at a significant time like the Feast of Weeks. And if that's the case, well, then the bride going one week before there might be some some significance to it because the one week before and why it has significance is because we're looking at the connection to John's birth and the time of his circumcision, which is the beginning of the 40 days in the end time understanding in the revelation of the end. It's the beginning of the 40 days of the son of man. So as you guys all know, it's Luke in order. You have John's birth, right? So you got John's birth goes to seven days and on the eighth day circumcision. And then it goes to Luke chapter two. Luke chapter two starts with the birth of Christ and it begins the 40 days of the son of man. We've, it, which then leaves three days, of course, right? To the Holy Ghost, which again follows Luke chapter, uh, uh, John chapter 20, where John chapter 20, Jesus is there. He goes to the father. He comes back on the same day. Same day at evening, he's there with the apostles, he breathes on them, and then he leaves and he comes back again after eight days. Then what is it? That's also the start of his 40 days, which goes into Luke chapter 24. The disciples who follow him, they're there until Acts chapter 1. It's 40 days are up, they see him go, and then they go join the apostles and they wait for the Holy Ghost 50 days later. Most people think that that is Feast of Weeks Pentecost. But we have proven that the Feast of Weeks and Pentecost are not the same. One is Feast of Weeks, then shall you number 50 days. That 50 days is the count of Pentecost. So what we end up seeing is this could be the relation to birth of John to his circumcision, which would be the pre-trib escape, the wedding that takes place in heaven for the bride of Christ, right? And the guests and everybody going. And then the Lord returns after seven on the eighth day. And this quote unquote begins the tribulation. But really, of course, the tribulation started right at the beginning of the 50 days. And we're going to touch on this a little later because it's something that I've spoken about in the past. 
that, of course, the tribulation is going to begin on day one of the escape. But it's not the beginning of the 14 years. But of course, it's, it's tribulation, man. Tens of millions of people will have vanished. And what do we know about the white horse rider? We know Jesus, the son of man, is the white horse rider. And we've seen from Luke chapter 2 in the typology at his birth for 40 days. We've seen in Isaiah 9 in the typology of his birth after Israel is attacked in the north. Then uh, uh, unto us a child is born. So it's like the escape happens. The attack happens in northern Israel, probably Haifa and Tel Aviv. Then you have to the eighth day while the wedding is taking place in heaven. The Lord returns on the eighth day. He's come like one born, right? Just like Luke chapter 2. And he's come after. He's coming in the darkness after northern Israel has been attacked. And he's coming in the darkness, right? To shed a great light. But what is, what is this time then? This would be the white horse rider time. So you see what I'm saying? So what we're seeing here, <coughs> excuse me, what we're seeing is the tribulation, quote unquote, officially beginning. I mean, this is the white horse rider. If we've got the year, this is the time of the white horse rider. At the birth of the Son of Man, the 40 days of the Son of Man is the white horse rider. We've proven this out. We've got videos on it and everything else. The 40 days of the Son of Man, we've shown this. So it's actually still tribulation. However, it's not until the 40 days are done, wherever that would equal, I don't remember anymore, somewhere around here. When, when the 40 and then the 50 days, three days later after the 40, brings us to the end of 50 days, that the Holy Ghost anoints, and then it begins what? Well, then it begins the red horse rider. It's at the red horse rider where the 14 years officially begin after the Holy Ghost anointing at Pentecost. And that's why we have this connection from the Gospel of John into the end of Luke, right? From John 20 to Luke 24 into Acts 1 and 2 in the beginning of the age of the church. So how fitting that you have to the Father 70 years ending of the Feast of Weeks, right? To, to the Jews, to Israel. And then you've got the 50 days to Pentecost and the tribulation to the church beginning. You see? And that's what I'm going to show you here and bring more, uh, um, another revelation that confirms this. After my sip of coffee. All right. So what am I talking about? Here's one of those places right here. We've shared it a hundred times, maybe even more. And it comes from Leviticus, of course, chapter 23 with the Feast of Weeks. Okay? From the morrow after this, uh, or the way of offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. I just counted those earlier, right? Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days. Okay? We, we've covered this many times. If it was meant to be the 50th day, meaning it was only meaning 49 for the Sabbaths, and then the next day is 50 days, it wouldn't have said 50 days. It would have said, then shall you number the 50th day. And we've easily, easily proven this by showing back here the 14th day, the 15th day. Why didn't they call it the second Sabbath? Right? They could have given it some other name. You see, the 14th, the 15th. That means when Feast of Weeks says, then shall you number 50 days, it's telling you to count 50 more days. And we've proven this. And the way we did it was through the revelation of the end of days. Because the revelation of the end of days is 50-day count of Pentecost, then seven and sab seven of of Shemitah years, right? The last two that remain, which are like a seven and seven of Sabbaths. And then you have the 50th Jubilee. And that's what helped reveal all of this. <coughs> but look what happens when we go to Deuteronomy 16. So this is seven Sabbaths. Then on the next day, on the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days. We go to Deuteronomy 16. And again, 
Deuteronomy 16. Man, I'm I'm so grateful. I think it was our brother Charlie that mentioned this uh, maybe close to two years ago now. Maybe not quite, something like that. I, I try not to get too technical and saying year and a half, wait, year and a half, two years, something like that. And what it was, was he had mentioned how there were three feasts of the Lord, because as I say, there, there's everything is in threes, right? We, we, we talked about it even in the intro to the intro videos, right? You've got the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. You've got Matthew, Mark, Luke. You've got Luke, Mark, Matthew in pre, mid, post. You've got spirit, light, flesh, right? Over and over and over. You've got the beast, the false prophet, and Satan. It's always in threes. The end of days is seven years, seven years, seven years. But the first seven are the ones we're in right now. They're quote unquote easy years. And it doesn't mean everybody's life is easy, but compared to what's coming in the next two sets of seven, it's the easy years. What is it? It's the preparation in the spirit. It's the preparing of the bride of Christ. It's the spirit, those in the spirit, like Romans chapter eight, right? It, it's those in Christ living by the spirit. Like again, Romans eight and, and 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse two, those that are in Christ. But you see, what is Deuteronomy about? It's seven days of unleavened bread. There are three feasts to the Lord. So you got seven days of unleavened bread, You've got the Feast of Weeks, which is a single day. And then you've got the Feast of Booths, which is seven days to the eighth day. So what do you got? You have the pre-trib of the Feast of Weeks. Then you got seven years of seals with the bread of affliction as seven days as years. Then you got the Feast of Booths, seven days as years. And the eighth day of the Feast of Booths is what? 14 years. Plus, right, seven of feast of unleavened bread, seven of the feast of booths, and then the eighth day of the feast of booths is the new beginning. It's the final jubilee. We show it in this chart, right? It's just like this in this chart. There's your first quote unquote easy seven years, seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. There's your seven for unleavened bread, days as years, seven as tabernacles seven days as years and then there's your eighth day or final jubilee and it's also called what new beginning amazing how that happens right well what we see here and and we explained on this a number of times not too long ago about you know how this is connected to christ all the way back in the beginning we've explained how it, it showed why christ was the middle cross Right? It's, it's a representation of 717. But the way it's going to play out is 177. Now, one doesn't mean the, the one for, for the Feast of Weeks doesn't represent a one of years. All right? It's just, it's, it means beginning, just like Aleph. Okay? That's why it's in Savan. It's going to be in Aleph. It's going to be in Taurus. The Feast of Weeks is always in Taurus. In our day and age, it's in Taurus. It is the third month. It's called the beginning. So you have the beginning, seven of seals, seven of trumpets, and then the eighth day, the new beginning. Now, here's why I wanted to show it with the Feast of Weeks in Deuteronomy 16, because in verse 9 it says, Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee, beginning to number the seven weeks, from such a time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn, and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Uh, we're missing something, aren't we? There's, there's no mention of 50 anything here. So not only do you not have a mention of it even as a 50th day, like they like to tell you, which it can't be because Sabbaths have to go off the moon, right? So not only is it not a 50th day mentioned, it's not even telling us then shall you number 50 days. This is, this is more evidence that the Feast of Weeks is separate from the 50 day count that follows, which is to Pentecost. You see? Which means, if we go look 
<clears throat> excuse me, at the calendar, and we see, and we're, we're looking at this scenario, and this one is the Feast of Weeks, well, then Jesus would have been born the week after. You see, if, if it was here, and we're calling it the Feast of Weeks, then the 50 days would begin from here. So this would be the 50, week, 50 days, uh, sorry, the Feast of Weeks, the seventh Sabbath, and then your 50 days count from the 16th of Sivan. And we've explained this a number of times recently that that is still very possible. However, when we see and understand and know historically and have looked it up and have gone into the sun, moon, and stars and see that the 15th day of the third month is Jesus' birth, and we know that his birth is connected to when he comes for 40 days, and his coming for 40 days isn't until after seven days to the eighth day, well, then it would make sense as to why Luke, in order, has John the Baptist's birth first, and that connection to when the wedding is taking place before the Lord, the Lord shows up for his 40 days, which would mean this is actually the Feast of Weeks. When you look at it on the chart that I have, we're going to go to the other chart, but this one here, and I say fe Feast of Weeks to Feast of Weeks, you have to understand it, it's an approximate because we're still divided. Not, not I shouldn't say divided, but <clears throat> almost like it, it's a toss-up because when the 70 of the Feast of Weeks are over, the 50 days begin. So if this is the Feast of Weeks, then the Son of Man wasn't born on the, 50, uh, on, the 50, on the Feast of Weeks. He was born the week after. Okay? So when I say Feast of Weeks, it, it's just, it, it's right in that range. It's connected to the time frame of the Feast of Weeks. And again, like I said, it doesn't mean that this can actually be the seventh Sabbath. And where do we get this? Where can we see this possibility? It's in Exodus chapter 19, <clears throat> right? In Exodus chapter 19, one, it says, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day <clears throat> came they into the wilderness of Sinai. So it's telling you it was the third month, and it was the same day of the third month as it was when they left. When did they leave? They left on the 15th day of the first month which means this is the third month, 15th day. And this, this could be very, very telling for us. Because as you know, when we go through this story, the Lord tells them to be sanctified and ready, right? Uh, ready against the third day. And then you go to the rest of the story, and then it's six days, and then the seventh, and then Moses goes up for 40 days and 40 nights. So you've got a 50-day count. Now, it's not the order of the 50-day count that we're looking for. But what we're seeing is something scripturally telling us from the 15th when they got there, now tell them three days, then seven, and then 40 days and 40 nights. So we do have reason to still believe this could actually be the true Feast of Weeks. And if this is the true Feast of Weeks, the escape is here, the, the wedding goes to here, and the Son of Man begins his 40 days right here on the eighth day when he returns from the wedding. Okay? So it's one of them. But I highly lean to hear because John comes first. Not in, not in the whole story of John comes first and restores. Not that. But in the Gospels, uh, in Luke in order, and of course, the timing of Jesus coming as a son born unto us in Isaiah 9. If that's here, and this has happened first, it completely lines up in Isaiah. So that's, this is, that's why I wanted to show you this, to let you see something here, that the Feast of Weeks is absolutely separate from the 50 days that follow. Absolutely separate. Crystal clear. It doesn't get any more clear than this right here. All right? So that's the first piece, <clears throat> because this is going to lead you now into something 
We've shared in the past, but now we're going to get more clarity on. I think I probably even talked about it, oh, two or three years ago. Maybe even closer to three. But then it kind of just went into the background because we generally have the understanding. This is just greater detail. And when I tell you guys this, you're going to remember and you're going to say, oh, yes, I remember. I probably even mentioned it just recently, but not to this extent. We know here from the transfiguration stories, okay? We see in Luke chapter 9, verse 28, it says, And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings okay so what do we know this means well we'll go to the chart of of the of the open books <clears throat> and we know that mark's transfiguration which is telling us after six days right it's one of those mysteries in the gospels that we revealed oh man i remember the day i understood it i understood mark and matthews for a long time but the one of Luke's was a head scratcher for so long. It took over a year to finally get that revelation. But Mark's <clears throat> was straightforward. Mark's after six days is the typology of after six years of seals. Okay, what happens at the end of six years of seals? Well, we go to Revelation chapter six. At the end of the sixth seal, who do you see coming on heavenly Mount Zion? Everybody's freaking out. The wrath of the Lamb is coming, right? And then what do we get in Matthew's? Matthew's transfiguration story tells us after six days, which is after six years of trumpets. And what do you see happen at the seventh trumpet? Everything is the Lord's, Lord's, it's his, everything in heaven, everything on earth. <coughs> He's come and returned feet down on the Mount of Olives. After the sixth year of trumpets, at the beginning of the seventh year of trumpets sounding, everything will be made known. The Lord returns, he destroys the enemy, all that stuff, right? So that's why you have six days as years, six days as years. But the about an eight days to Luke was something that a lot of people have scratched their heads over because it is clearly one of those differences. This is one of those differences in the Gospels that no pastor, if he's ever told you this, he's, he's I don't know if, if it's prideful, I don't want to say prideful, but um, he, he's too, I don't know, he can't just admit that he doesn't know. It's like they always have to have an answer, right? Not all of them, but most of them always have to have an answer instead of saying, yeah, I just don't know that one. You see, because you can't go to Luke's transfiguration story after reading Matthew and Mark's and says after six days and after six days, and you come to Luke's and it says about in eight days, you're going to be left scratching your head because you can't say this is just perspective. Somebody doesn't know how to count, or there's something deeper going on. Well, we know the revelation here in this ministry, and it's incredible, because about an eight days after these sayings, so what sayings is he talking about? These sayings that are up above it, right? Let's, uh, for example, let's just start in Luke 9, 26 and 27. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come, in his own glory and in his father's and of the angel, of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Remember that? Bam! That's your pre-trip. What is it telling you? It's telling you about eight days after these sayings. So he's saying this is this is now coming eight days after what? Eight days after I told you guys about this. Excuse me, eight days after I told you guys about this. Well, isn't that fitting? That's precisely what we're talking about. We know that, for example, we'll take it as Savan 8, May 28th, Savan 8. We know that it's what? Seven to the eighth day. Okay, so it's somewhere in the eighth day because after seven is the eighth day. But what else is it? Do you remember what I used to say? <clears throat> this means what? This means that there are those pre-trib that won't taste of death that are going to pre-trib escape. And about in eight days after these sayings, it's the Son of Man coming to start his 40 days. You see? So there's the escape. If that's the start of the 50, you have about in eight days later, 
And what is it? The Son of Man, like the transfiguration story and the typology of him being here to start his 40 days. So there is your about an eight days as days. But wait a second. Mark's and Matthew's were actual representations in the is to come as years. So how does this also give us a representation of years? Well, right here. There is no six and then the seventh and six and then the seventh in the first easy spirit-filled portion. What happens is the seven are going to be complete. Because to the Father God, to the Lord God Father, he counts from the Feast of Weeks. The Lord God is counting from the Feast of Weeks. So seven years will be done. When seven years are done, what is that? Right? Seven years are done, you're starting the eighth, right? But this says about an eight days after these saints. So here's an interesting thought. Okay? So there's the eight days after. And so if this is the Lord Jesus' birth, which it is, and this is actually the Feast of Weeks, it would seem the bride is still gone here. And this could still have a representation of the Feast of Weeks? Is that possible? But then it's, it wouldn't be 50 days. It would only be 40 and then 3. You see, I'm, I'm not totally sold on it, but what we're seeing is, again, if this is the escape, and this is about an eight days later, and then what is it, it, what's the other way of saying it? Well, we have, to, we have to confirm this in years. About an eight days is about eight years. So what does about eight years mean? It's somewhere around the start of the eighth year. It's somewhere around the beginning. Well, if this is the Feast of Weeks to the Lord God, and it's eight about an eight days later, so it's in the eighth day, it's also what? Right around about the eighth year starting. It's just into the eighth year. That's exactly what we're seeing right here. Seven days come to pass. Seven days as years, and it's about an eighth day. It's, it's just a few days in to the eighth year. But it's also a representation of the wedding and him returning about eight days later, some point in the eighth day, when he returns from the wedding. Again, what does it line up with? It lines up perfectly from Luke in order and John 20 into Luke 24 and then into Acts 1 and 2. So those of you who have been around for a while, you'll remember me talking about this, that it has a duality going on in it, meaning it is a representation of about an eighth day after, which means the pre-trib happens before this eighth day. So this is the event in Luke 9, 27 that happened. And now he's saying about an eight days later. So the about an eight days later is him coming as the son of man, as the white horse rider. Okay. But it's also what? It's also in that starting time frame of the eighth year. And what is the eighth year? It's that beginning portion of tribulation. It's like, it's, it's right in that range of it. Let me show you what I mean in relation to seals. Now, when you see this here on the chart of the chapters to years, it doesn't mean one seal, one year, second seal, the second, third year, fourth. That's not what it means. It just means these are seven years of the seals. Now, let me show you something. In Revelation chapter 5, Look at who we see in Revelation chapter 5. We see, uh, starting from Revelation 5 verse 11, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. I believe this is our 144 million pre-trib. 
and thousands of thousands. I believe this is the Messianic Jews in Christ. Verse 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing, right? Then what happens? So this is, the pre-trib is there, they're gone. This is the escape in Revelation 5. And look at what Revelation 6 starts with. When the lamb opened one of the seals or the first seal, there's the white horse rider. What's the white horse rider? <clears throat> the white horse rider is the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. But here's the thing. Is it technically the 14 years that have started? No. The, the 14 years don't actually start at the escape. They don't start at the white horse rider. They don't start until the anointing of the Holy Ghost of the dove, which represents peace, right? The dove going out. It's not until the dove goes out and then leaves that that group of disciples from Luke 24 will go out and the apostles will go out from Jerusalem. Bang. Then the 14 years begins. It's interesting, right? Because you would say, well, come on. Of course, it's already begun. Yes, at the escape, obviously, it's already begun. But that is the period, as we know, that 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 2, says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Okay? So, yes, everything is starting from the Feast of Weeks. Whether it's the 8th or the 15th, it's all starting from the Feast of Weeks. But it's going to start with 50 days. And then there's going to be 14 years. And, you know, when we talk about the 14 years, we've always had this general, fairly quite detailed understanding of it. But when it gets to the nitty gritty, <clears throat> I mean, I've never said that it's we, we know it's like at this time to this time. We know it's approximately some events we can know pretty darn close, like probably within the month. But. In general, you know, there could be a, a month or two on either side. We're, we're in that range of those events. And if you're a worker, it won't matter. The Lord is going to give you the understanding. This is, this is preparation for that understanding. That's what I believe is happening. And I'm going to show you this preparation. So what we're seeing here, even if we go into 2nd Esdras, we see the same thing here in 2nd Esdras, right? Chapter 13, starting in 29. Um, and the days are coming and the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth. This is the pre-trib escape. Bewilderment of mind shall be on all those who are, who are left, right? What is this? This is Luke chapter 21, Luke's discourse, chapter 21, verse 24 through, uh, sorry, 34 through 36. Okay? So what happens? This is, verse 29 is Revelation chapter 5, the pre-trib escape bewilderment of mind those who dwell on the earth and they're going to plan to make war that's the white horse rider time and then when they make war nation against nation kingdom against kingdom that is the red horse rider after peace has been removed you see we see this also so clearly it's begun even before the white horse rider at the pre-trib escape the world will be in a panic so Look what happens when we get to the red horse rider. And there went out another horse in Revelation chapter 6, verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Okay? There's the dove. One way, there's more than one way. There's, there's peace being taken from the earth. That means the dove is leaving. Right? The dove will have anointed that group, and the dove is gone. And what happens? and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. This is when the nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, break out against each other. This is the official beginning of the attack on Jerusalem that destroys them and removes them 
for the first seven years of seals, has them fleeing into the mountains and in captivity and killed, and World War III breaking out across the earth, and the time of seals, which is the final seven-year time for the world, for for the church, for the, the Gentiles grafted in. Okay? So what are we seeing? Even though the white horse rider is part of seals, even though at the pre-trib escape, it is clearly the beginning of tribulation. It's not until the 50 days of the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes, then the 14 years begin. Let me show you what I'm getting at and how I was relating in Luke chapter 9, particularly verse 28, about how this about in eight days is in relation to right around the eight days having started and right around it being days as days and days as years. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Because when you get, and like I said, those who have been around for a while, you'll remember me talking about this quite a bit about three years ago. It has a duality. Whereas Mark and Matthews are six years, six days as years, six days as years. And we've understood them very simply and very clearly for a long time. Well, you'll also remember from Luke 9, when I go into Genesis chapter 7 and have related this in the past, that I used to talk about this. But there was something that was still in the background that wasn't understood. And that is, starting in Genesis verse, uh, chapter 7 verse 4, remember this? For yet seven days. And in verse 10, it says, and it came to pass after seven days. Do you remember what I taught on this? There's, there, why, what on earth is the importance for saying yet seven days and after seven days? Why are you telling us about the same set of seven days? Right? When you go to Revelation, uh, when you go to Genesis chapter eight, and we go to the end in the typology of the 40 days of the Son of Man coming to the end, the raven goes out during those three days. The dove is the anointing at the 50th day, just like Acts chapter 2. We call it Acts 2.0. <clears throat> and then what? The dove leaves. And then what do you get? Seven days as the seven years of seals. Then seven more days after the mid-trib rapture. Then seven more days as seven years to the end at the 6,000th year. So this is one seven. And this is one seven. Why did Genesis chapter seven have to give us yet seven days and after seven days? Couldn't it have been just yet seven days and then the 40 days and 40 nights began? You see, these are the little intricate details and mysteries that are in there. And what I've taught on in the past, and this is what I'm showing you today, now we can prove it, is that this yet seven days represents the seven years. And the after, and it came to pass after seven days, which represents what? What is after seven days? The eighth day. So after seven days, and what do we get? After seven days, then it was what? The Lord shut them in, right? Genesis 16, 17, the Lord shut them in. The flood was 40 days upon the earth. When did the 40 days start? After seven days. When did the 40 days of the Son of Man? After seven days on the eighth day. So we have this duality from Genesis chapter 7 with seven and seven of days, but yet it's the same seven. And in, jo and in Luke chapter 9, we have the about an eight days that we've known for a few years is a representation of after seven, about an eighth day, and it's about eighth year. And what do we know it represents? You got it. About the eighth year. It's right around this start time of the eighth year. <clears throat> so why am I bringing this up now? 
because if this is the representation of the one that is years, which it is, even as we discussed it a few years ago, it's the typology of the first seven years of the easy years for the Luke spirit-filled group. Here's what I'm, here's my point. Watch this. If this is the end of the first seven days as years, <clears throat> this is the second seven days as years, and this is the third seven days as years. You see? As seven, 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 right? 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. 22,000 years will be the total from creation to when it's all over. Right? Uh, uh, 22, 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. 22 almond blossoms on the menorah. Or I guess, is it 22? 21? And then 22 is the new beginning. Right? At 7, 7, 7, and then 1. So it has 21. Right? If 8 has 7 days as years, 7 days as years, and chapter 7 has one as days as years, and then one in chapter in chapter seven verse ten as after seven days as literally being days. I'm 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 kind of I'm beating around the bush a little bit to to see if you guys are catching it even before I say it. There there was an issue, wasn't there? Because if this is the end of the seven years as in the seven years of the feast of weeks to the Lord God. You see why I was setting you up in the first in the first portions with Leviticus and Deuteronomy? If this is the end of the seven days as years represented by Luke's seven days as years for the first seven, then that means the next two sevens don't begin at the same time. They begin 50 days later. You see? They begin at Pentecost. Look at what we get. You got the seven year, okay? Seven years ending. When the seven years end, what happens? Bam! It's escape day. Feast of weeks. Bang! Escape day. And then what do you get? Seven days after seven days as the eighth day, okay? Then what do you get? Then you've got the 40 days represented as the 40 days of the Son of Man. Then we go to Genesis chapter 8. We go to verse 6, and the 40 days came to an end. Okay, so there's your after seven. Then the 40 days begins. There's your seven and 40. That's 47. And then what do we have? The raven that goes out, right? That Ishmael type, that Antichrist spirit goes up, out. And I believe will be, I'm not saying that necessarily Assad is the Antichrist, but that some people do, and he might be. But I don't heavily lean towards him, but he's a possibility. And, and we know that the raven means Arab, right? Let's go to Arab. Let's go to raven, I mean. Raven goes to Hebrew word. There you go. Dusky hue, right? The texture, the covering of their skin, right? A tanned color. It means Arab. And we know the Arab is going to go out. So when the Son of Man is completed his 40 days, Jerusalem will start to get compassed about. And when Jerusalem is compassed about, they should know, like Luke's discourse, to flee into the wilderness. Some of them, will, I mean, flee to the mountains. So they'll flee to the mountains. Majority will probably stay. My prayer every single night is that the vast majority will flee and heed the warning of the Son of Man. That's the three days when the raven starts to compass about with his armies, with Syria and those with Syria, <coughs> compassing about Jerusalem. Remember, northern Israel had already been attacked. And then what do you get? When the three days are done, Israel, Jerusalem is being compassed about, but you've got the disciples there and the apostles there. The apostles are already anointed. But the dove is coming to anoint the disciples. And when the dove is done, anoints them, what happens? The dove leaves. The dove is pulled back into the ark. That's the end of 50 days. 
What happens at the end of that 50th day when the dove leaves? I just showed you in Revelation chapter 6. Peace is taken from the earth and a great sword is given. Do you know what happens? Do you know what it means when a great sword is given? Let me show you. Genesis chapter 8 verse 10. The word stayed, which is what? The beginning of the 14 years. Seven days is years. Seven days is years. And what does the word stayed mean? You know it. Pain. Travail. Wound. Tremble. Grievous. Fear. You see? It's not the same as this one. We've shared it a number of times, right? This one literally means to wait. This one means tribulation has begun. This is when the sword is given after the dove has left. That is at the red horse rider. And look at what you see. Seven and then seven. Which means the 14 years is actually counting from Pentecost. And it means that in Genesis chapter 7, the yet seven days, which represents the seven years, is to the Feast of Weeks. And this was my point in that this does two things for us. It clarifies this because I had stopped sharing on this being seven days as years and this one being the one representing seven days as after seven days to the eighth day because you could still obviously look at them as being the day's representation. However, we know from Luke and we've known for years that there was a duality in the context of it. And now, the reason I'm bringing this back in the duality of the context is because one of them represents seven years as we've always known it. And why does it matter? Because if this is the end of the seven years, did you notice what comes after it? After seven days, 40 days of the Son of Man, right, in the typology. Then you've got the raven after the 40 days are done. Then you've got the dove. And then the 14 years begin. It is more evidence. It is more biblical proof and revelation of something that we understood years ago now brought into light. And why? Because now we know the Lord God is counting from the Feast of Weeks. That to the Lord God is the beginning. You see, that's why the, the pre-trib escape is the beginning. It's going to be the Feast of Weeks. It is the beginning. It is the start of tribulation. Absolutely. But there's 50 days that come before the 14 years. And those 50 days are the 50 days to Pentecost. Why do you think the Holy Ghost came at Pentecost 50 days from John's gospel resurrection to Luke's resurrection into Acts? Where are Matthew and Mark? You see, Matthew and Mark are exactly as we revealed from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, from verse, you can say from verse 4 through 8, right? Third day, the Lord resurrected. What did he do? Verse 5, 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 5. It said he met with the 12. After that, he met with a larger number. So the first group, the 12, that represents the Matthew group. After that, he met with the larger group. That means the Mark group. After that, verse 7. He met with the apostles. That's the John group. After that, verse 8, he means he meets with the one born out of due time. That's the pre-trib escape. So what do you have? Matthew and Mark are representing the Feast of Weeks count, the seven Sabbaths. And then the John, the apostles into, the, uh, uh, into Luke represents the beginning of the 50 days, which went from the apostles of John's gospel into Luke's gospel, right? In the resurrection with the disciples into Acts. This was the revelation. This was the, this was the clincher for me right here. Reading after that, after that, and last of all. Why? Because the first will be last, the last will be first. 
It's, it, it's so incredible. This was the clincher that revealed also. So the revelation of the end of days being seven and seven and then 50 was in the days seven times seven and then 50 days. And it was revealed right here. And that's what proved out what was laid out in the gospels. And is it actually what happened? Did the Lord actually, was he actually here for seven Sabbaths and then here on the eighth day and then here for 40 more days? No. It was the mystery revealed within the Gospels. That is the, the whole story. That is the entirety of the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. It's the mysteries of the is to come hidden in the is of the Gospels. And now we have just been able to prove out one more connection showing that the seven days as years to the Lord God ends there at the Feast of Weeks and then the 50-day count starts to the next seven and seven. You see that? We couldn't understand that before because we couldn't understand how the 70 years, the last seven ends, and yet there still be 50 days before the next seven and seven start. But now that we've been revealed this, now that we've come into the understanding, it dawned on me coming back to this and I said, oh, there it is. Now it makes sense. Now we have got the revelation in order. Yes, you can say it's the same seven days as days starting and ending, and it's part of that 50 days, yes, but we know it's a duality. We have known it for three years. And now, poof, soon as we got the revelation that it's to the Lord God Feast of Weeks and then 50 to Pentecost and then the 14 years, bang, it opened right up, perfectly in line. You know, I remember this uh, a, quite a few years back, maybe at least four years ago. There was a, a brother that used to be with us before he he turned and I remember having this discussion with them that there was something in Genesis. So just like John and, uh, sorry, just like Luke chapter nine and connecting this with Genesis, I knew that there was something else going on in Genesis as well. Like there was two storylines and that's what prophecy is. I mean, it's stories and stories within stories. And one of the biggest reasons that it dawned on me was you have 40 days and 40 nights, 40 days and 40 nights, and then all of a sudden, you come down to Genesis 7, 17, and you've got 40 days. You come into <clears throat> Genesis 8, verse 6, and you've got 40 days. So you've got one that's telling you 40 days and 40 nights, 40 days and 40 nights. You've got the other that's saying 40 days, 40 days. Why? Why have 40 days and 40 nights and it also telling you 40 days? There, there had to be a reason. Well, I had understood by this point, I had started understanding that 40 days are represented by the Son of Man. So at this Son of Man coming, I knew that this specific pre-trib 40 days connected to his birth was all about this timing, like at the beginning of Mark, 40 days, right? Was connected to his birth and the connection to 40 days with his birth. And what had happened was how to understand that there were two stories going on. The, I, I knew that it was there. And, and with this old brother, I, man, I was like, it was, it was one of those things. Just like, just like Luke 9, verse 28, why it was about an eighth day. It took me about a year. And this, I don't remember how long, but it took several months before it had dawned on me. And here's one of the clinchers as to how we understood it. Many of you guys will remember this. In Luke chapter 17 is where I began to understand the story had two parts in the story of the ark. You see, we read starting in Luke 17, verse 24, for as lightning comes under one part of the heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. Well, this is when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. Okay, so he's telling them the end first. And then in Luke 17, 25, he says, but 
first. And you guys will all remember, but first or before this or before these things, it re relates directly to Luke chapter, Luke's discourse, chapter 21, verse 12. So he's now saying, I'm, this is this will be me in my day, feet down on the Mount of Olives, right? As lightning coming from one end to the other. Well, that's exactly the wording that you read in Matthew's discourse as lightning from one end to the other, right? I think it's even in Matthew 28 as well, which represents the end of trumpets. So then you see, like I said, in Luke 17, 25, but first. Well, by this time, we had understood that the Son of Man is coming for 40 days first. He's not coming around saying, I am the Christ, follow me. And no, he's going to come and do signs and wonders. People are going to believe him, but very few. There'll be thousands probably. I don't know how many, but the world will reject him. And we know it's all related to Luke's discourse. We know it's related to Luke as jo uh, um, Luke 11, Jesus as Jonah will be, as the Son of Man for 40 days. Again, another thing that's part of revealed in in the differences within the Gospels. So this, but first, must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation? When you do a study, somebody had done a study, it was shared in the forum a while back, that this generation is always talking, when it's talking here, especially, I think, especially in the New Testament, but even in other places, this, this phrase, this generation, is always in a context of the end of days. Clearly, this one is. Because they're asking him, what's it going to be like when he comes? He's literally telling them when he comes in verse 24, it's going to be as lightning from one end unto the other. But then he says, but first, just like Luke's discourse, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Well, what days of Noah are related to the days of the Son of Man that are related to the days as Jonah in Luke? The 40 days of the Son of Man. And what did we come to understand from this? That Matthew's discourse and the 40 days uh, uh, and the, the days of Noah, right? About, uh, 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 where is it? Starting in verse... Uh, 37, Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What do we know about this coming of the Son of Man? This is when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. This is going to be, and this is what brought about the revelation in Genesis chapter 7 and 8 that there was two contexts hidden within the story of the ark for the end of days. One is the one that we had just described, which represents the three sevens and one seven ending, then 50 days, and then seven and seven. And when it's all done, it's the 6,000 years. And then we've got the one that relates to when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And this one is connected to what? The 40 days and the 40 nights. It'll be as it was in the days of Noah. And these days of Noah and this storyline is approximately a year long. Well, what do you think the seventh year of trumpets is? It's approximately a year long. This is why you see it towards the end of Matthew 24. It represents that final seventh year of trumpets or the 14th year of tribulation. And when it's over and you go to Matthew 25, that's why you read of the foolish and wise virgins, because now he's prepared a place. Here he's coming to get his second bride, right? That new heavenly, new Jerusalem, or, or his, his, not his Gentile bride, his Jewish bride, right? That, that Rachel type. And what do we know? You have the foolish and wise virgins. Everybody thinks that's pre-trib. It has nothing to do with pre-trib. It literally has to do with the end of the 13 years, him being here, re-preparing, destroying the enemy, preparing the place in the 14th year, just like a bride, right? They, they can have an agreement. They, get a, they have a, 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 a commitment, right? A commitment, the ketubah or something at the 13 years old. 
He goes and prepares a place. The father sounds the trumpet, the shofar. One year later, right? They don't know that exact day and hour, but one year later. And in the 14th year, when it's complete, what happens? He comes for his bride. It's not the Gentile bride of the pre-trip. This is the Jewish bride. And what happens? It's the story of the foolish and wise virgins. Here he comes. Those will be left out. Those who are wise. It's phenomenal. All of this came to be revealed and helped connect the revelation of the difference from Luke 17 to Matthew 24 and the storyline of 13 years and then one year, the 14th, just like the ancient Jewish brides were. 13 years old, commitment to marry. They were essentially married, went and prepared a place for one year, returned after that one year and the fathers say so. 14 years are done and then the one week wedding. And you know why that's so perfect? Because when you go into Matthew chapter 25, which is at the end of that Noah year, you see? The end of that 14th year, there's your foolish and wise virgins, and where are they going? They're going to the marriage. They're going to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Right? But not, not the pre-trib one, not the Gentile one. Pretty amazing, isn't it? And then you've got your parable of the tenants for what they do during that week while they're at the wedding, and of course we've covered that. Well, this wedding and this connection is not the same as Luke chapter 14. And this is why in Luke 14, this wedding feast that takes place, <coughs> do, you, do we read anything about the foolish and wise virgins? Nope. Just that make sure if whoever goes pre-trib, you want to sit down in the lowest room. Don't get too excited. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine if we have finally understood this is the year and towards the end of May or early June, you're going to not taste of death as Luke 9.27 said, and you're going to be at the wedding in the third heaven? What? It's going to happen at this last generation. The truth and understanding the end of 70 years. Could you imagine? I, of course we could be. Imagine how excited you're going to be. You won't have experienced death and you'll be gone in the spirit. And when you get there, you're going to the wedding and you have to remember, guys, to sit in the lowest room <laughs> in the midst of all that excitement. Remember to sit in the lowest room. Crazy, right? Well, this is that pre-trib Gentile wedding. Well, remember what happens when he comes back after the seven days to the eighth day? Then he's having a banquet dinner, a supper, a dinner with those who are left to work, those who are going to put their necks on the line. This connection is exactly what we're seeing here in Genesis chapter 7. There's the after seven days. What happens after this seven days as years? The Gentile pre-trib wedding at the Feast of Weeks, pre-trib escape, the seven-day Gentile wedding is taking place. When this wedding is done, which is going to be what? As Genesis 7 verse 10, after seven days, when he returns on the eighth day, and is the 40 days of the Son of Man will then begin, that's when he will have his wedding with, uh, not his wedding, but his banquet meal with those who never went to the wedding because they were chosen as his remnant bride workers. They are his first fruits, remnant bride workers. That's, again, why we see in Leviticus that Jesus, the feast of first fruits, first fruits, and the feast of weeks is the first fruits, all right? So of the first fruits of everybody going pre-trib, there's a first fruit remnant worker who put their necks on the line. It's all directly connected now. There's not a, there's not a hiccup. There's not like a little, oh, what do we do? No, we understand now. And isn't that amazing? Because did you see what happened? We now have it as the years and the days. 
So the seven years to the Lord God ends. And what do we have it? If this is the true time for the Feast of Weeks, the 70 years comes to an end to the Lord God. Pre-trib happens. Seven-day wedding to the eighth day. The Lord comes on his birthday, begins the 40 days. He's going to meet with those disciples. He's going to have a banquet with them at the start of his 40 days. This is crazy. I was going somewhere with it. Oh, yeah. So this means there's the end of the 70th Feast of Weeks. And if that's the end of the 70, and yet there's still the 50 days to go, there's only one explanation. There's only one explanation. And that is why I started you in Leviticus chapter 23, verse, starting in verse 15. Seven Sabbaths complete. Then from the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days. And that's why Deuteronomy doesn't have anything about 50th or numbering 50 days later. Now, do you understand why the dove is connected to the 50th day? Do you understand why from John 20 into Luke chapter 24, into Acts 1 and then to Acts 2, it's the Holy Ghost as a dove came upon them? Right? Because it wasn't Pente it wasn't Feast of Weeks, it was Pentecost. But because the church and Judah are mixed together in seeing only one set of seven, do you understand why now the majority aren't prepared for what's coming? Most of them don't understand it. 90% aren't aware. They're not diligently seeking. There are qualifications for a pre-trib part of the Gentile bride. There are 100% definitely qualifications. And let me show you, just for anybody that's new, I'll show you two places. In Luke 21, 36, it's directly related to those who go pre-trib. Remember what we said in, um, in 2 Esdras? Look at what it says here in verse 35. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Look what happens after the escape. Most high will deliver those who are on the earth and bewilderment shall come over those who dwell on the earth. See that? Why are they going to freak out? Why is there going to be will bewilderment and a snare upon them? Well, for those who were what? Watch ye therefore, those who were watching, and pray always, those who were always in prayer, that you may be because it's not guaranteed, right? You could walk away. You can turn and say, forget this. I'm done with everything and convert and want to be a Muslim. See? That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things, all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So when somebody tells you, oh, there's no pre-trib, you can tell them you can even show it in the Apocryphus. Second Esdras chapter 13, starting verse 29, right down to 40s. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. Well, where else do we get it? We get it in Hebrews. So you got to be watching and praying, right? You got to remember, a lot of people like to accuse people and attack because they're watching dates. And even though we know from this ministry that, that we have, we've been blessed to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ, to, to be able to take his revelation and reveal it from the beginning of the book to the end. Everything? No, of course not. Don't be silly. But more than it has ever been given in all of history, absolutely. So even though others are wrong and they're scattered and so forth, as long as there's some context, because if they don't understand the revelation of the Gospels, if you don't understand the revelation of the 14 years and the 50 days that come before, well, then you are going to be kind of going from event to an event and event. But I don't, I, I, you know, they're still watching. 
as long as they're watching and praying, and what else? If you're going to be like Enoch was, we should do like Enoch does or did. Hebrews 11, verse 5 and 6. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Where did we read that? We read that in Luke's transfiguration, right before the transfiguration story, right? The Before the eight days that came after. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, so you need faith, you need to be watching, you need to be praying. It is impossible to please him for he that comes to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you have to have faith because without it, it's impossible to please God. You have to be watching and praying and diligently seeking, believing that he is a rewarder and will do what he said he would do. You see? There are qualifications, aren't there? Of course there are. Of course there are. Who is doing this around the world? I believe there's going to be about 100. I believe it's probably going to be exactly in that, that 10,000 times 10,000. I believe the number will be 144 million. 1.8% of the 8 billion exact population of the world when it happens. And it's one, 144 million people. So what is that? It's the first fruits of the church. Okay? It's the 10% of those who are claiming Christian, about 1.5 on the earth, truly claiming to be Christian on the earth. And of those, 10% goes first. Why? Because that's the first fruits. So we can see what it takes, we can see what qualifies. See? And so what are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to keep diligently seeking, aren't we? We're going to keep seeking, searching, praying, being diligent in all these things. Well, let's bring it to the next piece. Remember this in Daniel 9. In Daniel 9, we've been talking about this lately, right? And actually for a little bit. There's... The wording is very, very interesting. And, and the awesome news is the awesomeness of God. Because we're covered from both ends. You'll see what I mean. You see, for example, we know that there's 14 years related to 14 chapters. We know that Zechariah chapter 1 is telling us Verse 12, you know, uh, halfway through, how long will before you allow to have mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of, again, uh, of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these 70 years? Okay, which means it's still in the 70th year. And then you get to verse uh, chapter 7 of Zechariah, starting in verse 5, halfway through, and it says, even those 70 years. So you've got a past tense of 70 years. So we know there's a 70 years and then 14 chapters begin, right? As 14 years. But we also know, depending on how you read Daniel, and this is like uh, uh, our brother Brian, I think I had mentioned this earlier, I'm not sure, that our brother Brian, right, over on 165 with Mike and Ed and some of them, they believe that the, that the understanding of this wording, and they, they saw it a couple of years ago, that the understanding of this wording, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, uh, in Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are deter determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So it, it can sound, like when you're reading this, that 70 weeks upon Judah and Jerusalem are going to be determined. Right? 
because it's to finish. Well, if you come up here, now what's 70 weeks? We know what 70 weeks means. 70 weeks is directly related to feasts of weeks to the Lord God. And how do you know that it's 70 years of Feast of Weeks? Well, the, the, it, it's so crazy that we miss these simple things, right? In Daniel 9, verse 2, towards the end, that he would accomplish 70 years, hello, in the desolations of Jerusalem. 70 years in the desolation. So there's going to be a completing of 70 years and desolations of Jerusalem. We know these desolations of Jerusalem are going to happen during the 14 years. So it, it's interesting in how you read it because in one case, we could see 70 years ends and the 14 years begins. But if you also look at it from this perspective that these guys had noticed and said, well, it, it kind of actually seems like there are 70 years determined to bring everything to an end for Jerusalem, of which when the 14 years are done, it'll be the end of the 70, right? And I remember Brian first sharing this and those guys sharing it probably like something like two and a half years ago. And back then, of course, you know, for just about every year since Israel, we thought turned 70, We've been seeking and discerning and trying to understand where is the true 70th? Well, we're here. We are here. The Lord God's 70 is to the Feast of Weeks. We understood it, as you guys all know, from Deuteronomy, from, from uh, uh, Luke chapter 13 with the three and one. And it led us, of course, with our brother referring us to what he had found in Leviticus 19, which is when you come into the land in three years uncircumcised, the fourth year is to me and the fifth year is yours. That meant the fifth year started for them. Well, from when they captured Israel, you got to remember, when they, were, when, they re when they were given Israel after World War II in 1948, you realize they also had Jerusalem, right? They didn't have all of it, but they had half of it. And then when they attacked in 1967 and defeated the, the, the other side, they unified it, quote unquote, but they gave the Temple Mount to Jordan to, to watch over. And it was still the Palestinians on the other side, but ever since the Jews have been encroaching on that side, right? And why did they do it? Well, because they captured it in 1967. That's why you hear the Palestinians saying, oh no, no, we wanna go back to pre-67 borders. Well, do you know what's so fascinating about that? When Israel came into the land in 1948, we know it's in the fifth year it was theirs, right? And it started year one. Well, what does this year end for Israel? 1948 to 2023, 75 years complete, right? Because you got to remember 1948 to 1949, that first year, they hadn't, they had to still plant, which they did in 49. Then they had a government and then the count began. But if you count from when they came in in 1948 and you were to count it like that, even though we've got the proper count, it still equals the same thing. This year is 75 years complete. Well, from 1948 to 1967 is what? 19 years. So if five years are complete and the Lord God told us how to count when they came into the land, and we know this is the end of 70th for Israel when they came into the land. How many years are left from this year, Feast of Weeks, to Jerusalem and the 70 years being complete from when they took the land in 1967? 14 years exactly. 14 years from this year, Feast of Weeks, to the 70 weeks, feast of weeks completed for Jerusalem, right? This is something we recently shared in, in how did we find it? <clears throat> it all began, as I said before, <coughs> excuse me, with the Shemitah year count, the Sabbath years. 
all I did is I had this idea, like spirit led, because it just came into my thoughts. It wasn't me. Just suddenly I was just pondering things. And I thought, wait a second. I, we know that there are two seven years left. If we count those two seven years and we know it's just we know about the third and we just keep counting them back. <coughs> excuse me. And we go all the way back to the time of Christ. Let's see how it lines up. But then for a while, what didn't we know? We didn't properly fully understand until just earlier this year how to fully understand the count from Leviticus 19. We didn't fully understand what it meant in Luke chapter, excuse me, <coughs> in Luke chapter 3, when Jesus began to be about 30, which we covered in the second last video. We know now what it means when Jesus' death and resurrection was in 33 AD. We know his approximate age at the time of Passover at his death and resurrection. <clears throat> and that's where we're going to go next. But as this all got more and more clarified, and we corrected the understanding of the year zero and how to count, and how to count years and people's years, everything lined up. Jesus was born in the Sabbath year one, and why this became important was because of what it led us to, as you guys know. As I mentioned earlier, the reason it led us to Luke chapter 13 and the three years and then the fourth year, let it be done, and then cut it down was because when I had counted and it equaled 289 Sabbath years to the end of the 70th, I said, I, I, instant, I just had a thought, let's look into the Greek to see what that word means. And it turned out it's used one time and it's the word for the vine dresser in the story of Luke 13. Three years I have come. There's nothing on it. It's not producing. The vine dresser says, let me give it one more year to dung it about. And if not, cut it down. <clears throat> so what does it mean? After four years. That led us, of course, to Leviticus 19. What happened? When you come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees, you see, which means it's not till after you've count, planted all manner of trees and then they establish their government. So even though it was 1948, the count of year one doesn't begin until 1949 and the Lord is counting from the Feast of Weeks. So 1949 Feast of Weeks, as you all know the story, they planted in January of 49. So when you finish First Feast of Weeks, right? You go one year from 49 to 50, 1949 to 1950, year one is complete, and you observe the first year completed of the New Year of Trees in that year. When we got that revelation with the word in, that word in was the difference in being able to finally understand what this count here was. The, the ability to count what it means when he began to be 30, <clears throat> it doesn't happen after you've celebrated your 30th birthday because that is at the completion of your 30th birthday. Once we understood that, the coins were in alignment, the death and resurrection were in alignment, and his birth in the Shemitah year was all in alignment over and over and over again and this is where i was saying see i'm calling it feast of weeks to feast of weeks it's in that range right whether it's the week before or maybe the third month 15th day is the feast of weeks and that's why the seals begin at the white horse rider and the wedding was before it you know what's interesting about the wedding let me show you something real quick <clears throat> a little side note we've, we've got some nice weather here man it's see look at that When's the last time you saw 17 degrees Celsius here in Canada at almost 10 o'clock at night? It's been awesome. It just really started this week. We're in the mid-20s. We, we skipped right over spring. Unfortunately, we haven't had any rain, so it's dry as a bone out there. So let me show you what I'm talking about. In, as a side note, in Genesis 29, remember what had happened <coughs> with Leah? 
this is a very interesting side note, guys. Very, very, very interesting. Because this is something, I, it, it was in the back of my mind years ago, but it's, it's easy to just set aside because it's types and shadows, right? It's not always going to be like just precisely bang on. Or is it? Or is it? And here's why I say that. Because we know in, in Genesis 29, starting in verse 20, it says, And Jacob served seven years. Remember, that's the first seven years, right? That's the, that's the Luke seven years. So he served seven years, but they seemed unto him but a few days, right? So it flew by, and it brings us, of course, to the creation, the first creation story, gap theory, all that stuff, right? But they seemed unto him a few days for the love that he had for her. And then in verse 21, it says, And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Brought her in, his daughter in unto her, and he went in unto her. And he gave, and Laban gave unto his daughter Leah, Zilpah, his maid, uh, uh, for a handmaid. Verse 25, and it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve, uh, serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore hast thou beguiled me? Laban said, and Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. You see, I can't give you the younger one before the older one, the firstborn. Right? Before the firstborn, the eldest daughter. What does he then tell her? Fulfill her week. Then he gets Rachel. But for Rachel, he still has to serve seven more years. And during those seven years, Rachel never got a kid. Right? That's where she was complaining because she, ha she wasn't having any kids. But Rach, uh, Le Leah was pumping them out like crazy, right? So what do we see? This is why I'm bringing this up. What did he do? The seven years were fulfilled. Then he made a feast and had to what? Right? Fulfill her week, an actual week, the seven-day wedding. When did the wedding take place? Before the seven years? or right after the seven years. You see what I'm saying? What is this telling us? Just as we've been showing. If this is the true feast of weeks, this is the escape of the bride of Christ, and you've got the seven day wedding to then the eighth day when the son of man comes to start his 40 days, which means what? The seven years or that last seven of the 70 has come to an end. The first seven years have been fulfilled according to the Lord God's position at the Feast of Weeks being where it all begins. And then the wedding week. You see, this was one that was easy to kind of just set aside because it's not giving us all of this detail. It's not giving into this nitty gritty in counting days like we were seeing in Noah. It's essentially just seven years, seven years and six year story. And of course, as you guys know, that seven, seven, and six year story is this seven years, this seven years, and this six years that brings us to the end of the 13th year when the Lord, what? Returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and confirms the covenant that he made with all of them that he had to break when he was cut off. Okay? But now all of a sudden, now that we see that there is an end for the Lord God's seven, which is Feast of Weeks. And there's another beginning where the seven and seven are connected to Pentecost. We can now see how this seven ended and he had to fulfill her wedding week. Pretty wild. That was one I had, it was, you know, like I said, I was just easy because it was just details of years and not going into real specific day counts and so forth. <clears throat> now, now it's making sense. Now it's directly in line. You see, 
when we go back to this right here, let's go to where it is for when they captured Jerusalem. You see, when they captured Jerusalem in 1967, right, in June, so it was actually when they captured it the 11th of June, it was in Savan, the month of Taurus, right, the third month. And when they captured it, you didn't have to have when you come into the land, right? You didn't need this count again. This was the count from when they came into the land, planted all manner of trees, right? Then they had their government, and then the count begins. So Feast of Weeks 1949, one year New Year of Trees complete, two year New Year of Trees complete, three year New Year of Trees complete, fourth year New Year of Trees complete, and then the year was over. That was in the fourth year. One, two, three, four years. And <clears throat> this year was the first year that was theirs. Feast of Weeks, approximately, right? Feast of Weeks, 1953 to Feast of Weeks, 1954. In the midst of that was the fifth year of the New Year of Trees. It was theirs to eat from. That was the beginning. And what did Luke tell us? Luke said, four years I've been coming, or uh, three years I've been coming, Jesus says. No fruit on the tree. Give it one more year, and if not, cut it down. But it doesn't make sense on this side. You know where it goes? It lines up on this side. So if you took the four off on the other, then you would have three years I have come. There's no fruit on the tree. Give it one more year, and if not, cut it down. So the one from Luke is really like looking at it from this side <clears throat> when you begin the count in 1949 when they had everything established. And the Leviticus count is from this side and shows us the 70 years. So when they got Jerusalem, they didn't have to start this Levitical count of when you came into the land because they already had Jerusalem. They just captured the other side and took more control, yet gave some back as well. So what do you get? Look at this. 15 years in between, right? 15 years, but that's year one to the 15th. So what do you have in between them? 14 years. So when you get to the end, this is why I was talking about that in part with, uh, with Daniel, is you have the end of the 70th year from when they came into Israel. And this is directly connected to the Zechariah. 70 years coming to an end, right? These 70 years, and then, bang. Goes right to the 14 years, 14 chapters, the destruction that comes, everything else. And it just so happens that this year, and this is why we were so excited in recent videos, there is no other year in human history where the, four, where the 70 years of Israel, of truly understanding Israel, comes to an end, and the 70th year of Jerusalem will end at the end of those 14 years. So this is why it was like backstopped at both ends. Meaning in Daniel chapter 9, of which I'm going to show other stuff, but meaning in Daniel chapter 9, whether you saw it, as Jerusalem having to complete 70 years as Jerusalem, or whether you saw it <clears throat> as the 70 years from when they came into the land and also had Jerusalem, and looked at it as those 70 years ending, and then this was determined upon you, it makes zero difference. When 70 ends, the 14 years begins. Or when the 70 ends, the 14 years are over. This should have us jumping out of our skin. <laughs> Literally ready to leave our skin. There's no other point in human history. None. Nothing. Zero. Where you will have the end of Israel 70 and end of specifically Jerusalem 70. No other point in human history. That's awesome. Well, let me show you something else. I told you I was going to bring clarity, right? Hopefully you've already started to see that clarity. Well, I'm going to bring some more. Because here's a piece 
that has really twisted people up. And I, I shouldn't say really twisted them up. I mean, it's twisted it up, but the idea was there. You know, the, the, the understanding of it was there. And it was just maybe that it was off maybe a month, a couple months or something around the, in that time frame. But we were in the vicinity because we know it's 14 years, right? We've proven it from the beginning of creation to the end of Revelation. But let me give you an example of where this leads to Daniel 9 with Psalms 90 and 10. Okay, this is a great example to tie into it. Because you see, the days of our years are 70, right? Three score and 10, so 70 years. And it says, listen to this, three score years and 10. Okay? So three score years and 10. So it's letting you know that these are years. And what's important about this is, you see, it starts with 70. Hello. See what I'm getting at? So when you, when you look at Daniel again, and you say, well, 70, it, is it really the 70 when the 14 years are done, or is it when it starts? Well, this generation. You see? Remember what Luke was saying in, uh, uh, in uh, Luke 17? And Jesus said, you know, they're asking about when he's coming, when he's going to be returned, what's in the time of the end. And when he says, but first, but first shall the Son of Man be rejected and persecuted of this generation. He's talking about the final generation. And what does it say about the final generation? That's what Psalms 90 and 10 is. The days of our years are 70. And if by reason of strength they're 80, that strength, meaning that 10 years of strength, as you guys have all seen this before, is what? Tribulation. Travail, trouble, wickedness, sorrow, pain. And then you got the word sorrow, which means affliction, which is tribulation, evil, false, idle, wickedness, sorrow. It's 10 years of tribulation. Seven years of seals, three years of trumpets. Okay, so what do you got? Seven years of seals and three years of trumpets. That is 10 years complete, right? Seven and three is 10. That is 10 years complete, which means some point in the 11th year, Remember what it said? That remember what it said in First Kings in First Kings six, and it said that the that it took seven years in total building from the fourth year of the foundation being laid until the temple and everything was built in the eleventh year, right? What's in the eleventh year? After ten is complete, begins the eleventh. What does it say about the eleventh year? There's your ten years. Yet is strength and labor for it is soon cut off. Man, has that word ever irked me. <laughs> I used to despise that word soon, and everybody in prophecy knows what I mean by that word soon. And, you know, when I respond to people in emails and comments and posts, I do say, you know, see you soon, we'll see you soon, and so forth, right? Because we know it's close. It's not as irking as it used to be. However, in a piece of scripture like this, it kind of is irking because... You want to be able to point to be able to show, look, this is 14 years. There's your 10, soon cut off. What does soon mean? It means a short period of time. So it's, it's definitely going to be less than a year, right? It's like going into 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years. Man, did I hate that at the beginning too, because what does it mean? Well, it's got to be less than 15. Or would have said 15 or 15 above 15 years. So it's got to be less than 15, but it's more than 14. Well, of course, we got the revelation and confirmed by the Spirit that it was 50 days. 50 days, 14 years, 50th Jubilee. So it was this soon as well. Soon cut off and we fly away. Well, the pre-trib is the days of our years are 70. Bang! At the 70, the pre-trib is gone. You see? And then what happens? 10 years, and then you have this soon cut off. This soon, it's not clarity, is it? There's an approximate time frame of X number of months, which I've always said is about six months. 
Might be five, it might be seven. I'm about to show you it's probably less. And I'm gonna show you how I could prove it. Well, let me show you what else, okay? So, or let me continue. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Now, most people that talk prophecy, they'll tell you this is the pre-trip. It 100% absolutely is not the pre-trip, okay? This, as we know here in this ministry, is Revelation chapter 12, 14. When they fly away on the wings of an eagle for the last three and a half years of trumpets, okay? There's your about 14 years revealed in here. However, it's this mysterious soon. Well, that's the type of story that we get in Daniel chapter 9 as well. In Je Daniel chapter 9, uh, verse, starting in verse 25, listen to what it says. 25 and 26. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Bang. That means there was obviously an attack. This is why I also look at this 70 weeks as years. I also look at it as being the 70 that is, that's coming to an end. And then the 14 years. But if it is the other way, it's rejoice anyways, because we're covered on that end if it's specifically Jerusalem as well. All right, so that's covered as well. But I do believe it's first because we just saw it in Psalms 90 and 10. Because <laughs> let me say, let me show you something that'll freak you out. Because if you believe that that 70 is related to Jerusalem having to complete 70, then guess what? If the tribulation is 14 years and it begins when 70 ends, uh-oh, then that means tribulation won't start until, uh, until 2037. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody here that believes the tribulation will begin in 2037 when Jerusalem has completed 70 years. You see what I'm saying? All right. So definitely would side on the other side, which is why we see it like this here, which is why we see it in Leviticus, uh, 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 in, uh, sorry, in uh, Zechariah. And so going back to Daniel now, it's the other reason why we see it as well, because what we're seeing is the 70 weeks or 70 what? Feast of weeks. You guys remember that? We're seeing 70 feasts of weeks. So the Hebrew word 7620, one of the definitions is feasts of weeks. That was a big deal, right? We just reiterated that from the video three years ago that the Holy Spirit had confirmed. So we know that it's 70 feasts of weeks. And what do we know from Daniel 9, verse 25? Well, it's telling us from the declaration to rebuild. The only way there could be a declaration to rebuild if there was a destruction first. You see, when does this destruction take place? Well, it starts at the beginning of 50 and it ends at the end of 50. Right? Northern Israel and Jerusalem, bang, within those 50 days. So for a decree to go out means there had to be a destruction first. And we know that happens from the 50 days from when the first 70 weeks of the Feast of Weeks ends. But now listen to this. This is where people have asked me and they're like, ah, I just don't see that. I mean, I kind of see what you're saying, but you know, there's got to be more clarity. And let me show you what I would say. Because again, we saw in Psalms 90 and 10, we, we saw it over in 1 Kings 6. We know that it's in the 11th year, the temple will be finished. The foundation during seals, middish seals, the temple finished by mid trumpets. And then of course, Messiah is cut off and everything breaks out with Satan in the pit opening and everything else, which will take you to the end of 13 years. And then there's the final 14th year of the Lord. Remember, 13 years, they get married. The final year, he's got to prepare the place and then bang the wedding at the end of the 14 years. All in order. So here's where the issue comes in. Again, in Daniel 9, 25, know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the prince shall be seven weeks. We know this is the seven years of Feast of Weeks before they will come back, okay? We've already broken that down. Comma and means there's a separation between them. Watch this. Three score and two weeks. This has caused an issue, okay? Three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times and after three score and two weeks, 
shall Messiah be cut off. Okay? Remember we were just reading in Psalms 90 and 10? And soon cut off? So you had 10 years, and at some point in the 11th year, the city and the streets, the temple was rebuilt, and cut off happened. In Psalms 90 and 10, it only tells us soon. In Daniel, we have the seven years, and then we've got what? Three score in two weeks. Well, one of the easiest things to deduce is that Psalms 90 and 10 already gave us the first three. Because it said 10 years, that's seven plus three. <laughs> so it's clearly over three years. But how much is that soon in the 11th year? And when we came to uh, Daniel 9 and we try to understand what is this three score in two weeks before the cut off, which is the soon cut off in Psalms 90 and 10, before they fly away on the wings of an eagle, what on earth is three score in two weeks? Okay, this is why the King James is so important. Well, you'll notice that there's no comma here. So they're added clearly, they're, they're a portion of each other together of this period of time. Whereas this was seven weeks, comma, and another period of time of three score and two weeks. Now, what I used to show <clears throat> with the three score, okay, it'll tell you it's 60, but we see something, is it in Genesis 5? Or 15, I think it's 15. Right here, in Genesis 15, 5, this is how I used to show it. That maybe it's just a, you know, the, the definition needed more in the definition than just to say 60. Meaning, you know, we see a lot of definitions that have more than one definition in it, right? It means this, but it can also mean this and mean this. <clears throat> and I always thought that this is what it could have used and needed was that in Genesis 15, 5, it said, And he brought forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars. Okay, number the stars. And if thou be able to number them. So what does this word tell and this word number mean? It means to score with a mark. To record it, tally it up. Okay to score. So if somebody was telling you something was three scores, if I went over the, the, the word for Genesis, G-E-N, and I put a score across it, that would be one score, a score across the E, that would be two, and a score across the N, that would be three. Okay, so it's like marking off what? Like you're marking something off. So if we're looking at it as a year count in Daniel 9, then I'd be saying I'm scoring one year, scoring two years, scoring three. And then the two standing on its own could look like the half portion. Okay, so you've got like a score, a score, a score, and then a two. So it could look like the appearance of a typology of three and a half years. But is it a bit of a stretch? Well, maybe, but we do have scoring as a mark. And, and the word means to score, right? Because it's talking about Daniel 9, 3 score. Well, let's go back and read it again. And let me show you the revelation I came across yesterday or today. 3 score and 2 weeks. Are you ready for this? I believe I found it. And when you see where I found the answer, you're going to say, oh my goodness. Remember I told you, uh, not in the intro video, but in the video before, when I had gone through this and, and showed some of this, I think it would be a great idea to maybe even do a short video just on this chart and just break it all down. I know Mike was talking about it. Maybe we'll do a live show with Mike on 165 in the next little bit and, um, and, and cover some of these things. Or maybe he wants to do it. But when... I was saying in that second to last video, and as I was saying earlier, we've got this now. This is the revelation of the count. It all started with the Sabbaths that led us to the four-year difference 
it led us and clarified for us the truth in the birth at the birth of Christ at the time frame of the Feast of Weeks, whoops, being the first Sabbath, we were able to then finally just understand that in 28 AD, Jesus began to be 30, meaning he completed his 29th year. And from the next day forward, he began to be 30 years of age. You cannot begin to be 30 at your birthday because the day after your birthday, you're actually in your 31st year that has started. And then it revealed that in fact, Christ's death and resurrection was in 33 AD at Passover. <clears throat> we have proven that the first year, right? Remember Jesus's first year, this first year was what? While John was still here. John was still baptizing for two months while Christ was still around. I mean, uh, well, Christ was there in another area with his apostles, the disciples. And then John was in prison for 10 months before he was beheaded, of which he still had his disciples following him that were following John. So that was about one year. It wasn't until John had died that then Christ began to be 31. And in his 31st year was the first official year of him being on his own, if you will, without people also going to John. So you had one year, you had two years, you had three years and into the fourth year. The world will tell us that it was three and a half years, like I was saying at the beginning. Well, we know it's not three and a half years, right? We know this. We were able to prove this one year where Jesus was, quote unquote, in building, in, in establishing and in preparing before his three and a half years on his own. So, or about three and a half years. So in reality, how long was it? Well, it was about four and a half years. But three and a half were him and his ministry, and they all focused on him. And the one year, John was still here, and you can call, quote unquote, like his, his setup time for Christ. Okay? Well, as we said earlier, then we've got the Leviticus count bang on with the new Shemitah year cycle on the first year, in the first year that it began, that it began to be theirs. Jerusalem, in the beginning of a new cycle when, it be, when they took it over. And it all comes to fruition right here, unequivocally. All from the Shemitah year count revealed and brought all of this together. All at once? Heck no. It's been two years at least. Putting this all together and getting all of these details. Well, I got another detail for you. I got another detail. And it's awesome. And it's all connected to Daniel chapter 9. Check this out. Okay. Jesus began to be 34 years old. Okay. At the beginning of 32 AD. Right. About Feast of Weeks time. So remember, this goes from his birthday. So about the Feast of Weeks time to about the Feast of Weeks time, okay? All of this, start of Feast of Weeks on this side to the time of about the end of Feast of Weeks, okay? Feast of Weeks to Feast of Weeks. So one year goes from Feast of Weeks to Feast of Weeks. That's where the Lord God is counting from, the Father. <clears throat> so we proved out that he began to be 30 in 28 AD. We showed that the coins, of course, from 29 AD, from Tiberius Caesar was in the 16th year of Tiberius Caesar. And in, Le and in Luke chapter three, it said it was the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar when Jesus began to be 30. Well, just so happens Jesus began to be 30 in 28 AD, which is the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar and the minted coins that were 29 AD in the 16th year of Tiberius Caesar when Jesus began to take over the ministry solely on his own. You see, this is Luke chapter three right here, revealed and understood. So of all of these other parts, from his birth 
to his death and resurrection, to Luke chapter 3, to the Shemitah cycles, to Israel coming into the land and, and getting set up, and then their years count, and the fourth year and the fifth year being theirs in a new cycle and getting Jerusalem in a new cycle, 70 years ending, leaving 14 years, 70 ending, all of this perfectly in line. Do you think it's possible <clears throat> that what I'm about to share about the remaining time of Christ's ministry is probably going to be in the right place too? Check this out. This goes from Feast of Weeks, as we said, right? To what? <clears throat> Excuse me. To Feast of Weeks. You can really say, I mean, if you want to split hairs, this is the Feast of Weeks at his birthday, and this would be the day after Feast of Weeks at the beginning of his 32nd year. Okay? Or, sorry, sorry. At the beginning of his 34th year. This is actually his birthday on this side, and there's the start, day one of the new year, which is the start of his 34th year. Well, did you catch it? If you go from Feast of Weeks, which is what? If you go to Feast of Weeks, <clears throat> you can call this whatever year you want, but let's say it's 32 AD, okay? Jesus' birthday at the time frame of the Feast of Weeks, right? But Jesus' birthday was the 15th of Sivan, okay? Jesus' birthday, 15th of Sivan. So now he's turned 34 in 32 at the Feast of Weeks, okay? In 32 AD. He's going to complete his 34th year. The Whoops. He's going to complete his 34th year the following year at the, feast of, at the time frame of the Feast of Weeks on the 15th of Sivan. But at Christ's death and resurrection, he doesn't get to 33 AD at the Feast of Weeks, does he? So if this is now his birthday, so let's say this is his birthday in 32, and you go all the way through the calendar, all the way through the calendar, and now we're in 33 AD in January, February, <coughs> March, April, and there we are. In Nisan, here's Christ taken into the hands of sinful men, crucified, buried, and then his resurrection. Okay? Crucified and buried. How, how much longer before Jesus was 34 years old completed? Well, Nisan 15 to Ayar 15, there's one month, to Sivan 15, two months. There were two months remaining <clears throat> at Jesus' death and resurrection before he would have completed his 34th year, which means what? It means that Jesus wasn't 35 and a half. You can say about 35 and a half, but he wasn't 35 and a half. He was two months shy of his birthday. So he was what? He was three he was 33 years old and 10 months. He was 10 months in to his 34th year at his death and resurrection. <clears throat> so we had one year as his establishment, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we had 3 years and 10 months to his death and resurrection from his birthday. Okay? He was 33 years and 10 months, or 10 months in to his 34th year. Are you ready for this? Let's have another read of Daniel, the second half, Daniel 9.25. Um, shall build Jerusalem unto Messiah the prince, shall be seven weeks, that's the first seven years of seals, comma and three score and two weeks. No comma, just and, they're together. Two weeks is clearly what? Years. Just like what? <clears throat> 70 weeks was feast of weeks years. Seven years or seven weeks was feast of weeks years. Two weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, Two weeks is what? Two years as Feast of Weeks years. 
in the final week is what? Final year. So what do we have? We have seven and at least two and one. And then, of course, we know what happens at the cutoff, which is Daniel 12, uh, 12, 4 or 7. When it's time, times, and a half time. And we know <clears throat> that that relates to one, two, and a half years. So you've got seven years, two years, one year, that's 10. And then you've got two and a half. You got like 11 and a half in, you know, in that 12 year range, right? Well, watch this. What are we missing? <clears throat> And why do we have three score? This is why the King James is so important to be able to discern the revelation of the end of days. You need it in the Gospels first. <clears throat> but you can't take the, the conversion that man made in these other ones. What is three score? <clears throat> well, what do we know about the word weeks? We know it's more than one thing, don't we? It's not only the Feast of Weeks, right? One of the definitions, remember I said words have more than one definition? So when you read the, the word for weeks in Scripture, it can have a definition meaning Feast of Weeks. It can have a definition meaning of seven days of a week, you see? A period of seven days, a week. But it could also mean a week of years at Feast of Weeks counts. And that's what the ones that say years right behind them, they're the years counts. So in this definition that we're looking for, we're not trying to understand two weeks. That's crystal clear. That's literal two years, just like all the other weeks of years are there. But we're trying to understand what the three score is. What is it? It means 60. 60 what? Well, the definition also means weeks, like an actual week of seven days. How many weeks are in a year? 52, right? And scripture told us that it represented 60 weeks of like week counts and two weeks as years. <clears throat> so you've got 60, but one year equals 52. It leaves you with eight weeks. Eight weeks is how much? Two months? Two months? Right? Isn't that like two months? So it's like a year and two months, which means the understanding of this would be three years and two months. How can I prove that? Well, everything else on this chart is all in order. And with all of it being in order, lined up with every portion of time. Remember, is, is, is eight weeks, is it exactly two months? Almost, but guess what? So was Luke chapter three when Jesus began to be, meaning he'd already just started to, to go into his 30th year. What do we get <clears throat> in, in Daniel? We have approximately two months. What did we have at Jesus's death and resurrection? How long was Jesus's ministry when it was solely himself that they turned to? Three years and 10 months. And it just so happens that if we count the three score as actual weeks and the two weeks, which are separate as the other weeks, which are represented as Feast of Weeks years, and these two are to be added clearly directly together, it would equal three years and two months. 
So if you take three years and 10 months of Jesus's ministry the first time, and you take three years and two months of Jesus's ministry the second time, what do you get? Seven years, of course. Seven years exactly. And I believe we have just found the revelation of three score and two weeks. Remember when there's a cutoff, when the cutoff happens, it's not an immediate fleeing, like there's fleeing and there's stuff that takes place, but there's like a 30 day period in between, right? We, we shared that in the past. It's still going to equal 14 years, but we have to understand there, there's where it's beginning at Pentecost. There's where it's ending, where the Lord God Father is counting with Feast of Weeks. So it's, it's in this range. But what we've now been able to see is that this three score in two weeks, equaling three years and two months, is revealing precisely the balance remaining for the Lord God, for the Lord Jesus to complete his seven year ministry. Do you remember what that meant over here? How the end of days, we know that the Lord is returning after six days, after six years, right? And he's here for that seventh year. And then he begins trumpets in the 11th year when he's cut off, which is about now three years and two months into it, which is two months into the 11th year. It's, it's kind of making sense now, right? Because what did he do? He's going to what? When he comes at the end of the sixth seal, he's going to destroy the enemy. Antichrist is going to be killed. He's going to seal the 144,000. The rapture of the great multitude is going to come in. Then the seventh seal, he's going to make a, 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 a covenant with all nations, with all people. All of that happens. And then his ministry begins. Just like it did in the time with John. He was here, he was here for a year in the seventh year of seals. He will be there on heavenly Mount Zion, but he's preparing, he's establishing things. And then he takes over, officially taking over in his next three years and two months is now making sense because he will have completed what? He will have completed the total of seven years by mid trumpets at the middish trumpets when he's cut off, he will have completed seven years of his ministry. But he will have also completed what? Nine years when you add the preparation year of when he was, John was here, and when you add the preparation year of the seventh year of seals for a total of nine years. Do you know what the number seven means biblically and what the number nine means biblically? Check it out. The number seven, everybody pretty, pretty much knows what it means, right? Wondering what the seven, number seven means. The number seven in the Bible means complete or spiritual perfection. You see? Jesus will have completed his mission when he is cut off. It's complete. It's complete. When he returns after that, we know what happens during those first, uh, the last two and a half years before that final year when he returns feet down. But once he's cut off, he will have completed his seven year ministry. But what else did he complete? He will have also completed nine years. A preparation, three years and 10 months. A preparation, three years and two months. Seven years of himself and him being the lead, and then two years of preparation. So we've got completeness and spiritual perfection as seven. What do you think nine means? Do you know nine means the same thing? Almost, but more complete. It means divine completeness. Not just complete in spiritual completeness, but a divine completeness. Listen to this. 
or finality. Harvest, fruitfulness. Do you know what happens when Messiah is cut off? They're going to fly away on the wings of an eagle. Hidden. Good. Concealment. Isn't this exactly what we saw? Precisely what we read connected to Psalms 90 and 10? When Messiah is this soon cut off that we've been trying to understand forever, what precisely is this soon? You see, this is why we always had to say, I always had to say about three and a half years. Because it was always believed that it was three and a half years of Christ's ministry. Nobody, I've never found anybody who has ever understood there was one year before his three and a half years. I've never found anybody who saw it. And I didn't find it through scripture in that sense. I found it through the revelation of the end that revealed it to the scripture in the is. And so we know if it was three and a half years, this would have been really easy to soon cut off. But we know it's not always that easy, right? That's why we're given soon. That's why we're given this number count of three score and two weeks. But what happens at that point? That's when they're going to fly away on the wings of an eagle. When they're flown away on the wings of an eagle, where are they going? To a place protected in the wilderness, right? Which will be at the what? At the end of the Lord's nine years total complete. One year, three years and 10 months, one year, three years and two months, when the nine years are complete in the entirety of the Lord's ministry, they're going to fly away on the wings of an eagle in Revelation chapter 12, 14. And, the woman, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time and time and a half time and half a time, sorry from the face of the serpent. They are protected until the very end of the 14 years. So even though the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives after that 13th year, right? After he's been cut off, Satan will have about two and a half years. Then the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives to start the 14th year. He will destroy the enemy. He will bind Satan. There'll be a destruction, a devastation, all that stuff, it'll be, it'll be the Matthew 24 as it was in the days of Noah, that one year typology playing out. And when it's all over, it'll be the final Jubilee year when they will all come back from the place in the wilderness protected. They will come back into Jerusalem. We see the water flowing out from his throne. It will replenish and rejuvenate the earth. The, at that sound of the last trumpet, we know that those who are alive will be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You see, that is all about the end of trumpets. And people will live now to hundreds of years again. And when that 14th year is over and they come back from the wilderness, they will all be given their portion of land because what happens in the final jubilee? As should happen in every jubilee, all debts are forgiven, all land is returned. Guys, this is so awesome. Isn't that exciting? You see? So what does nine mean? When his entirety of his completed nine years are over, what is it? Divine completeness, finality, harvest, fruitfulness, hidden good, Inverted good, not sure what that means. Concealment, truth, and judgment. Hello. What is seven? It's like a it's like a smaller version, a lesser version in a way of completeness. It's a spiritual perfection, right? It is a completeness, but it is not the absolute completeness that nine is. A divine completeness that is finality. It's awesome. All of this, guys. We just found another one. Three years and ten months. And all of a sudden it dawned on me. I think it was last night. I'm not sure now. 
or earlier this morning. And bam, I'm reading through it and I'm always praying the Lord, you know, lead me in your spirit. What would you have me to see and understand? No, I don't hear voices. No, I don't hear the word of the Lord. No, I don't, I don't get visitations and all these things. Some people do. I get it. I get the revelation of understanding. I've told you guys this before. The evidence is everywhere. The evidence is in the revelation itself. Do you know, for anybody that's new, you may not know this yet, but we have done this in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of scriptures from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. And in every part and in every portion, it is always in alignment with what was revealed before. And in these past three months or so, oh my goodness, the details are getting to be over the top. And man, this chart was huge. You can find the, the, this chart linked in the description box under the video. Um, I think it's called the Sabbath year count or something like that. You'll find this. This chart is done. Every part and piece is in alignment with scripture, with historical record, with the shroud of Turin, with the when the Lord started, when he was officially on his own, when the coins were minted, the year that they correlate with scripture, the sun, moon, and stars, all of it. Do you know what that means? If every time we've gone to show something now in this final chart, and in every piece it aligns with the sun, moon, and stars, it aligns with scripture in multiple places, it aligns with recent historical facts of them coming into the land and the biblical count, when Jerusalem was captured and its biblical count, following the Shemitah cycles and their counts, and it all equals the 289. You see that end of seven that we were talking about? When the 70 ends, what takes place? The one week wedding of the 50 days. That's the difference from here to here, which is why I have the 14 years at true Pentecost beginning right here. And this is the feast of weeks to the end of the 70 years of the Lord God. From the end right here to the start right here, is that 50 days of which when this 70 years and this seventh year is over it is the seven day wedding of the firstborn first fruits before the new it is the old winter wheat that gets harvested and is used first before the spring wheat which will be connected to exactly as we've shown as I finish it now, which takes us back to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, the Feast of Works of Weeks. The revelation of 717 begins with one and then is the seven years as seven days of unleavened bread, which is when the time when the spring wheat is ready in the fall is harvested but is not used it's brought in but it's not used until the second day of passover in unleavened bread in the seventh year of seals hence the seven days as years and bread of affliction and the seven days of booths is the seven years connected two trumpets and the eighth day is the new beginning you see 21 years to the 22nd if you go seals and trumpets it's the 15th year as the final jubilee if you're only talking trumpets and the feast of tabernacles it's only the seven years as days and that would be the eighth so you can say 22 15 8 you see what i'm saying so awesome Brothers and sisters, I, I'm honored to be able to teach and to share and that 
The Spirit has led all of you guys here. I am so grateful. Oh, man, there are bumps in the road. People come and people go. I wish nobody ever left. I don't want that any leave. But it happens. There are ups. There are downs. I don't wish ill will on anybody. None of them, even the ones that in the past that just freaked out. I don't wish them ill. I would love to reconcile it all and everybody can just be at ease. Because I believe we're all still brothers and sisters. Remember what happened with Paul, right? Paul with the John whose name was Mark, right? John Mark. And he didn't want anything to do with them, so that they gave him another one. They gave him a, a, a Sylvanus, right? And he went out with Sylvanus because he just absolutely, there was no way he was going to go out on a mission with John, whose name was Mark, or Mark, whose name was John. John, whose name was Mark, or something like that, right? Doesn't mean they, that they weren't brothers. It just simply meant <laughs> they just didn't see the same way, right? And so we want to be on the same page here. It doesn't mean we can't see certain things differently. And, you know, we got brothers or sisters seeing a difference of a month off. Overall, we see the same thing, right? We understand the 50 days. We understand the 14 years and the final jubilee. We understand seven years of seals, seven years of trumpets. We're looking at this time frame of the 70 years. But we're not interested in, <clears throat> I don't want to say another channel's name, but... We're not interested in going from, from this day to this day to this day, from event to event to event, and say it's here, and then it's this, and then it's this. Why? Because we know the revelation is the, the true Feast of Weeks. It is absolutely 100% connected to the true Feast of Weeks, of which I believe we have proven it is in the month of Savan of Taurus. And I'm okay with brothers or sisters that think it's a month off and not connected with Taurus, but still the third month. But we're not needing it. We have the revelation. It's been five and a half years. <laughs> Can you see what's going on? It's been five and a half years of this. The evidence is revealed in all of the videos. I couldn't have continued this for five and a half years. Nobody would be watching. This would have been a nut job if I couldn't continue to confirm it and show it spirit-led, confirm, confirm, confirm from the creation to be able to show the three creations of the three Gospels. Pre, mid, post. It's all a process. A process of watching, praying, being spirit-filled, diligently seeking in faith, loving the Lord. And it has led us to the true Feast of Weeks. Whether it is according to the Hebrew calendar, which I believe it is, or whether it's to a one month off calendar count, it is going to be to the true Feast of Weeks. And this chart has shown us that at no other time in human history will we have the true 70 from when they came into the land, and the true 70 of Israel starting and ending the 14 years with everything else connected to it, including the revelation of the 50 days that begins after the Feast of Weeks. And I'll finish with this, just as a reminder. You see how it ended with the dove? You see? The raven and then the dove? How does it end from, from John, the 50 days beginning in John 20, and then the eighth day and the 40 days beginning from the eighth day going into Luke 24, which takes them into Acts 1 and into Acts chapter 2. When is the dove in the revelation of the dove? Pentecost, 50 days later, the Holy Ghost anointing. Do you understand that in Luke chapter 21, this compassing about <clears throat> that we're talking about by the raven, by Syria. Do you understand that this compassing about will not take place while the 40 days of the Son of Man are there? Because the raven antichrist spirit, that Ishmael spirit, 
doesn't go out until the 40 days of the Son of Man are done. This compassing about will take three days or will be taking place over a period of three days. That it says, when you begin, see? And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation, there's your first desolation. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that be in the countries, those who want to go in, do not let them come in. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. When does the sword get given, brothers and sisters? Red horse rider. You see? And shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. End of seals. This is the Lord warning during 40 days. The Son of Man warning during 40 days. When his 40 days are done and that raven spirit goes out, they will begin to compass and come and start to surround Jerusalem. Having already been devastated in the north with the short war with Syria and other Middle East Eastern nations, this is coming from Ishmael, from the raven, from Syria. And they are to flee because the Lord is going to deliver the enemy, uh, is going to allow the enemy, is going to allow Syria to destroy Jerusalem so that his land, as we read in Daniel 7, will now rest for those seven, day, seven weeks as seven years. Brothers and sisters, the understanding is there. The revelation is true. So keep watching. Keep praying, keep in faith, stay diligent and know that the Lord God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The time of his coming is at hand. I look forward to either meeting you in the lowest room, prayerfully accounted worthy in the third heaven, or here at the banquet he will have for his girded up remnant servants ready to follow him for 40 and serve him during the time of seals and possibly longer. His Smyrna remnant group bride with his apostles. Brothers and sisters, I love you. God bless you. God bless your families. I pray this has given you greater understanding. We'll be able to draw you in, draw you closer and continue to help you. Just continue to draw you in. Watch it again. Pause it. Pray over it. Ask for the Spirit to give you the eyes to see in the end time understanding. Because it is a beautiful, wonderful thing. In Jesus' name, thank you and amen. Amen and amen. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.